Hello, and welcome to our 125th and final episode, at least for now. You never know what the future will bring. I'm here with Wendy, and we're talking about language tips and tricks. And Wendy, you've been learning languages for most of your life, so you must have a tip or two to share. I guess I do, yeah. I started learning languages when I was a teenager. When I was in high school, I studied Spanish for three years and then continued on at university. Um, and discovered that I really loved it. Prior to that, I hadn't had much exposure to foreign languages or to anything foreign, really. Growing up in Alabama, it wasn't a very multicultural place. But I really loved learning languages and learning about other places and other cultures through the language. Uh, the one thing that I did discover was that book learning is not enough. You really have to actually practice speaking the language. Because when I was in high school, even though my teacher was a native speaker, she was from Puerto Rico, she never spoke to us in Spanish. And we, the ch the students, never spoke in Spanish either. The, the whole class was conducted in English. So I learned a fair bit of Spanish. I learned how to read Spanish and write Spanish because I was a good student and I was enjoying it. So I learned book Spanish, but I, when I went to Mexico for the first time, I discovered that I couldn't speak at all. The words just wouldn't come out. So you really have to practice speaking. That would be probably my top tip. Yeah, definitely. And I think probably one thing that you've seen through the course of your language learning is that there's so many more options, so many more possibilities for learning languages now, both in terms of the ability to access content in your target language and also in tools and apps that are now available. And so we'll try to get to all of this. Absolutely. Yeah. No, the tools available now are amazing. It's so much easier than it was when I was growing up. Yeah. So basically, traditionally, your options are to join a class or to get some kind of teach yourself book with an audio set uh, and, and do that. And now there's just an incredible number of options. And so the thing that I've preached, you know, to my students when I was teaching and really the reason that we started this podcast was to get people to interact with the language by consuming native material or real material. And there's just so much that you can do with that. And so what I say to people is that you know, you need to get to a point where you're enjoying language learning for the sake of it, where you're enjoying the process, uh, rather than being a kind of a, a study type thing that you kind of don't really want to do, but you feel that you have to do. Um, and so what I say to people is just do what you like doing in your own language, in your target language. So if you like listening to music, great, listen to music in, in your target language. If you like uh, watching TV or watching movies, then do that, maybe with the help of subtitles. If you like reading, which is something that I like doing a lot, then do that in your target language. And not everything works for every person. So I think there's a couple of examples there. For example, music is something that you've used a lot mm -hmm. because you're really good at lyrics, learning lyrics and remembering lyrics in English. And then that transfers over to your other languages as well. Yeah, I sometimes I'll be reminded of a song that I used to know 20 years ago, and I had completely forgotten about that song. But then once I hear a little bit of it, I can start singing it and still know all of the words. So yeah, uh, lyrics do stick with me. And I found that that was a great way for me to learn languages was by listening to music in other languages. But for you, that doesn't work as well. No, because I'm hopeless with lyrics, uh, even in English. And so when I'm listening in a foreign language, that's even worse. And I just uh, no, they just don't stick uh, with me at all. Um, but I, I like reading and I've found that that's been a really huge help with foreign languages. So for example, right now I'm reading a book in Portuguese and it's a novel, but it's about the Portuguese discovery of Brazil. And since I've been doing a, a lot of research about this period and era anyway, um, you know, it's right up my alley in terms of the plot of the novel. And so I am enjoying reading it for the sake of the content. It's not something that I think about in terms of, oh, I'm, I have to study this foreign language now. I'm just like, oh, I want to see what happens next in this book, so I'll just read it. Uh, and it happens that it's in Portuguese. So basically the point is that the, the goal essentially is just to read the book and enjoy it. And then it's almost a, an unintended consequence of that, that you improve in the language as well because you're reading it in a foreign language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice is to seek out content that you enjoy. So yeah, and also the, the medium that you enjoy. So you enjoy reading more than listening to music. So you're reading and you're also reading the type of books that you would like to read in English anyway. So for example, if someone likes cooking, then maybe they would go look for a YouTube cooking channel in the language that they're learning. Um, 
yeah, I think that it's important to find content that you're going to be interested in. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you mentioned before that speaking is really important and that's also easier than it's ever been. Even if you're not in the country where the language is spoken, there's a lot of, um, you know, websites and, and platforms online where you can arrange speaking with people. So italki is one that used to be a sponsor of ours. Mm -hmm. uh, conversationexchange.com is another. And these are sites where you just create a profile. You say what your native language is and what the language or the languages are that you're learning. And then you can maybe arrange a time to have a Skype conversation uh, with someone else mm -hmm. and that's really beneficial I remember doing that a lot with uh, Italian which I really enjoyed doing a few years ago um, probably not as good at setting it up and arranging it as I should be but once you get into it then you want to do it more and more so it's one of those things where if you just start doing it if you get over that fear initially um, then that's great and if you find someone that's at the same level as you are in in your language as you are in their language then you don't have to be scared or nervous about speaking because you know that you know they have those same fears when they're speaking your language too mm -hmm. um, and so you know it's just an environment where you can be uh, yeah, you can you, you can just be comfortable uh, and, and and not be nervous and, and just do your best. Yeah, and in some cases you may be able to find someone living in your same town or city, and you might be able to do you know a live in person exchange too, which is also a lot of fun and can you know lead to friendships and other things. Um, right, so meetup.com might be one way to do that. Are there mm -hmm. others that you know about? Um, I know at my university they arranged that for, you know, foreign exchange students to exchange their native language with the American students who are also studying at the university. So if you have a university in your town, uh, that might be something, um, you know, even if you're not a student there, they might be open to, you know, if you have a language that someone else wants to to practice with you, then they might be open to that. Or Facebook groups as well. There's yeah. often, uh, if you're in a major city, there's often groups um, that have weekly meetups or, or something like that as well. We have one that we go to sometimes uh, here in Lisbon with Portuguese, although we haven't been going to it since we got back from South America, but maybe we should get back into it. And they meet once a week and they speak for one hour in English and one hour in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are also a huge number of apps that you can get for language learning now, and you're a little bit of an expert on this because you wrote an article recently about it, so you've been doing your research on these different apps and trying them all out. So what can you tell us about those? Yeah, well, the most popular one is Duolingo, so I'm guessing that a lot of our readers have probably tried Duolingo before. It's very popular because it's free, which is great that it's accessible for people in that way. Um, and I did find that it was very motivating because they use lots of gamification techniques where it feels like a game rather than learning. So it got me hooked on it in that way. But I personally found that the methods weren't that effective for me. So I checked out some other apps that I liked better. One that I'm enjoying is called Lingo Deer. Uh, D-E-E-R, like the animal deer. Uh, they don't have that many languages. So if your language is not one of the ones that they that they teach, then that obviously that won't work for you. But they are adding new ones all the time, and they're especially good for Asian languages. But I, b I believe you can study English with them as well. Um, Drops is another one that's a lot of fun that's more vocabulary-based. It's really just about learning individual vocabulary words and not necessarily learning the grammar and the structure, but... Uh, but it has a game type feel to it as well. And Mango, Mango Languages is another one that I've been enjoying. Wow. So you've really, uh, got your feet in all these different, uh, Yeah, I do. Apps. I have different ones that I use for different languages, like Lingo Deer I use for Japanese and Chinese, and Drops uh, I've been using for Russian, and Mango. I've tried out a few different languages in it with that one. So, um, yeah, I'm really having fun with the language apps. Cool. I mean, I think overall, the best advice you can give anybody is find whatever it is that works for you, try out different things, do things that you enjoy, spend time with the language, and um, you know, eventually you'll see the progress. Yeah, definitely. All right. So good luck to all our listeners on their English journey. We hope that this podcast has been useful for you and uh, that you've enjoyed it. Yeah, I hope so. And maybe see you again. Feel free to get in touch if you have any questions. We're, we're still around. And uh, thanks so much for, for joining us. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you.
Thanks for listening to English in 10 Minutes. To download a worksheet for this episode, including the most useful vocabulary and a full transcript of the conversation, visit EnglishIn10Minutes.com.